Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Nomen live stream. I'm your host, Adam Hartel, and we have got a great time in store for us today. Uh, what you're just looking at was actually the Nomen Campus Reel. Yes, that is our uh, physical campus located on a studio lot in Hollywood uh, with amazing digital labs, a sculpture lab, drawing studios, the works. Um, and if you're not familiar with Nomen, we are a 3D art school located in Hollywood, California. We specialize in training artists for careers in visual effects, animation, and games. And today uh, we have a guest artist by the name of Leticia Gillette. And um, she is going to be um, showing us how to use ZBrush to start to sculpt characters, but do it in a way that's going to make sense to people who have no familiarity with ZBrush and uh, are more familiar with drawing characters. So Leticia is a 3D modeler and texture artist with a focus on bringing characters to life. Before coming to the US, Leticia worked in Brazil um, with ArcViz in commercial houses, as well as a 3D generalist and taught for three years on the subjects of arc architectural vis visualization and 3D character creation. Uh, Leticia moved from Brazil to follow her dreams of studying at Nomen School of Visual Effects. Uh, while at Nomen, she studied a ton and met amazing artists. And after finishing school, Leticia worked uh, for various studios, including Disney Consumer Products, Blizzard Entertainment, as a 3D character artist on Overwatch, DreamWorks as a 3D modeler, and Netflix Animation as a character development artist. Today, Leticia lives in Los Angeles with her husband, Strange Cat Mia, and her crazy dog, Sadie, currently working at Walt Disney Animation Studios as a character modeling supervisor. So with that, everyone, please uh, help me welcome Leticia to the stream. Hi, Leticia. Hi, it's great to have <laughs> you back with us. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for the intro. <laughs> Sounds like it. a big shot. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you but... do awesome stuff, and uh, <laughs> it's great to have you here. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't have anything more to say. I'm basically going to turn it over to you. Uh, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about what uh, you're going to be doing with us today. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll just continue to chat as you move forward. So, yeah, the mic is yours. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so I thought today we could, um, especially for the 2D people, we could kind of like, um, and I do some 2D myself. I'm not great at it, but <laughs> um, I do love studying 2D because the process of like, blocking out ideas in 2D, you can use that process in 3D as well. And and I love doing that to get like idea, quick ideations on silhouette and, and shapes and stuff. So I'll show you guys how kind of like my brain works combining 2D to 3D. And I'll show some examples of models that um, and ideas. And hopefully you guys already got some ideas of like how ZBrush works, but it's at any point I do something you don't know, please um say it on the chat i can answer some questions but i'm gonna i'm not gonna go too fast or anything like that so hopefully you guys will be able to follow awesome awesome so okay. let me share my screen all right so while you get set up i'll take care of just a couple housekeeping items and as leticia yeah. mentioned type your questions into the chat guys uh my colleague xander who is actually uh, a Nomen advisor he is also in the chat uh, there to answer any questions you might have about Nomen specifically, if you're interested in training here. Um, but he will get your questions for Leticia through to me, and I'll be able to bring them up live uh, during the stream. Um, and uh, it's really cool what you're going to be doing today, Leticia, because I think we've got a lot of artists out there. At least I'm constantly meeting young artists that love to draw and are particularly interested in stylized characters. Um, so I think what you're going to be doing is going to be of great interest to those folks. Awesome. Well, so if you can share my screen, um, you can see this character, Joki. It's not a character yet. Um, but um, I don't really start with the sphere. Um, but as you can see here, if I turn on the wireframe of the sphere, um, it's kind of dense. And again, like I want to work clean. Like if you think about stylized, you think about very clean straight to curves, tapering shapes, decisions, like you don't want a wobbly thing. Obviously, if that's the style, but I'm just saying like in general, stylized, we have very um, decisions where like you have one side very clean shape, the other side kind of straight, or you have those sort of like tapering shapes and clean silhouette, the nose, you know, like sort of thing. So 
if you start with something this dense, you kind of set yourself to uh, trouble in a way where if I start moving this, um, and even if, depending on the size of my brush, um, if I start doing like little movements, um, oops, let me just get, uh, make poly mesh. I'll just mention for our audience as well, um, Leticia is using ZBrush, which is like the industry standard uh, 3D sculpting uh, software. And if you're not familiar with ZBrush, check out last week's stream with Josh Herman, because uh, he walks us through ZBrush for 2D artists, for people who've never touched it before. So definitely go back and check that out. Yes, and I watched some of that stream, it was awesome. So um, as you can see here, um, let me just frame this. Um, you know, with this density, like if I start doing movements, I might just like start getting lumpy shapes and stuff. And for cartoon, um, again, like I learned that the hard way where I used to work high res and then I start having a hard time cleaning my mesh. So I start working super low res at first, getting my silhouette, everything clean, and then slowly building resolution and having, and, and it gives you a sense of control, which is very nice. So. How do I low res this, right? Um, if you press W, which is the gizmo, there's this little um, customize button here, uh, this little gear, and there is a polysphere there. So I like to, first thing I do every time I take a sphere, I, I turn into a polysphere, which you can see is already much more low res, right? And you can even make this even more low res. Uh, how do we do that? Um, if I go to geometry, there is a button here saying reconstruct subdivision. This means that you're gonna, uh, ZBrush is gonna try to reconstruct lower versions, lower resolutions of this until we can't anymore. So if I keep clicking this, you can see here like now it's even more low res, which this is normally what I use. I don't go lower than this, but if you do want to go lower, you can click again and then you have this shape, right? Um, so I'm not gonna go that low. I'm gonna keep it just like this. So I'm going to delete the subdivision levels and I'm going to start modeling from this. Okay, cool. So what I want to show you guys is that when we start drawing, right? One thing that for cartoon at least that we do a lot is it's basically like you do a little shape, sort of like a sphere for the head, right? And you add sort of like the middle center line and then you have the sort of like this and then Let's say that this will be the cranium area of a model. And then sometimes we do what? We do like sort of like a shape like this. And we have this sort of thing, which this I like to call like the, the jaw or area. So we have two parts, part number one, part number two. So with that in mind, this is exactly what I'm going to do in 2D or in 3D, I guess. <laughs> okay, so we have that blocked out. So I have this, I can call this my cranium part. And if you don't wanna see facet like this, you don't have to control D and add subdivisions. You can use a visual kind of subdivision, which is called dynamic subdivision, which is a button here. If you see there's dynamic subdivision and it's a button that you can turn on and off subdivision. Um, and it just kind of like gives you this more clean look uh, but you're not actually dividing the mesh. It's kind of like a, a modifier on top of the mesh. So I'm going to do that so we can see a little cleaner. Control okay. shift. Sorry? Oh, sorry to interrupt. I was going to say we got a, a question came in the chat on kind of what you just covered with us. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can unpack this a little bit more because I know you did address it, but they're asking, how does low resolution help with modeling? Why not keep it high? Right. So again, like it's all about control. Uh, when you're thinking about... Um, cartoon, the more low res you have, the less uh, kind of like ins and outs on your mesh, like sort of thing like this is like, if I subdivide this, right, I start getting these bumps. But two things that is important, working low res is going to prevent you to have sort of like big um, the indentations. So like you see, like I have to push a lot to start creating indentations on my mesh. If I had this high res, I was starting to have like a bunch of little lumps on it. And I can show it later now. Yeah? Another good thing for you to feel like you have control of your mesh is to work, especially on this stage, to work with big moving brush. 
the smaller the brush, the more sort of like lumpiness you're gonna get at this stage. So I like to work with big moving brushes so you can see that it's like, it gets a smooth sort of feeling. So um, with this in mind, we have the cranium area. I'm gonna duplicate this, um, this sub tool. So I'm gonna say duplicate, I'm gonna move this down and I'm gonna create what I just said. It's kind of like the jaw, it's the lower half of the face. Let's say it that way, okay? And one cool thing that I like to do is to imagine that this line, you guys see this line here between the two sub um, spheres? I like to consider that that line is the middle of the eyes, like where I'm gonna place the eyes, okay? So let's say for example, I'm gonna place the eyes kind of high and this character is gonna have a big jaw or something. So this is where I'm gonna place my eyes, great. Now with the big move brush, like I said, I'm gonna start blocking the shape of the, the jaw area, right? And again, this is the jaw area and we know as uh, 2D people, I'm not a 2D people, but I'm gonna pretend I am. We know that um, the jaw area, right? If I'm drawing here, I have my cranium area, I have the jaw and it kind of like ends in the middle of the shape and then the ears come behind it. So I'm just kind of like pushing in like so, so we can kind of have that feeling, okay? So you can see here now, it doesn't need to be perfect. The only thing I ask you guys is to work clean, meaning big brush movements do not get like little lumps and nuances going on at this stage, okay? We're working with what I like to call intention. Every movement I'm doing, you can see I'm like very careful with what I'm doing, etc. So we can do something like this, okay? And one thing I like to do as well is with the gizmo, if you turn on this pizza, uh, the, the, this um, icon here, um, you can scale different subtools together. So I'm just gonna squish a little bit the head so it's not super round. I'm gonna squish it like this. Okay, so we have that, great. Um, now, what we can we start? Uh, so we have part one, part two. What we can do now is to start adding, uh, again, I'm thinking about silhouette here, okay? So what breaks silhouette? The ears. So we can start blocking the ears, part three. Another thing is gonna be the neck. So if I start placing the neck here, part four, and we're gonna have the nose at some point, and let's call this part five, okay? So again, I'm gonna duplicate my um, some tool here. I'm gonna make the ears, so I'm gonna push it out. And just thinking about very broad shapes, I'm not like designing yet anything. I'm just sort of like really just thinking about broad shapes, okay? And let's say like I have this shape here. I'm gonna rotate, place it sort of where I want. Let's put it like this, give a little rotation. Again, like in general, you have the head, whoops, sorry. You have the head and then right in the middle here, you have the end of the jaw and then you start your ear right after it, okay? And we can also take everything Again, I'm gonna turn on so I can use all the subtools and I can scale them, like give a little more depth to the head here. I'll turn it off, select the ear, um, gonna move it back a little bit and just give a little bit of a shape, right? We know that the ear has a little angle. It's not like straight on the skull. It has a little angle backwards like this. Looking from the front, if I want to be, you know, fun, I can like do a little shaping like this as well. And again, is this the right place for the year? I don't know yet. I don't have all the pieces. So I'm just putting things for now and we're gonna move them around. Um, I wanna mirror this year. So um, you guys probably learned how to mirror. So I'm just gonna do it. And you have the ear there. What, uh, what is the next piece? So let's make the neck. So I'm gonna take this. Oops. Again, like I'm just, I'm not, I only use, as you guys can see, I only use spheres to block everything that I want to do. Um, spheres are great. Why spheres are great? Because spheres, they are not like cylinders which are like straight lines and harsh things. They have this sort of like, whoops, they have this sort of like tapering quality and sort of like smoothness. So I'm a big fan of spheres. Let's put it that way. 
<laughs> now, speaking of, of shape language, I'm curious, um, mm -hmm. and what you're doing right now is awesome. Um, in in terms of like, it's you're doing exactly what we do when we draw a character. Right. Exactly. Um, exactly. But uh, with with shape language, do you ever like say, for instance, you're going to make more of a villain type character, which is going to have more of a overall angular and tr kind of triangle sort of a shape? Uh, do you mm -hmm. ever, you know? kind of start with more of a cone type of a shape or change over to a square if you want more of a square type of yeah. character? Um, I would say like, even though I still start with the sphere and I start adding those angles myself on it. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's like, if I have a character that it's very straight legs and stuff, I might start with the cylinder. But okay. in general, I was like 99% I do start from sphere. That's great um, to know. So you actually yeah. just working with spheres, you can get a lot of mileage. Right. And That's again, awesome. you can always turn on um, 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 it's kind of silhouette mode. I'll, I'll show you guys this better, but I'm just going to duplicate this and use this as for the nose. So I'm, I'm going to refine everything again. Like this is sort of like, imagine you're doing like a little um, uh, structural sort of thing. And we can do sort of like a very cartoony sort of nose. Um, and I, I'm just placing the nose, uh, kind of like end of the nose, like the tip of the nose. And then I'm going to make a bridge for it. Okay. So let's say like this is, uh, and then the cool part about this stage is like, you can already start playing like, what if I put the nose like right down here? Yeah. And you can kind of start visualizing already, right? What's so much freedom happen? in designing. Yeah. So much, so much. And you can think like, oh, did I break the character? Oh, am I breaking? You know, and you can kind of move around the pieces and, and kind of have fun with it. So let's let's go crazy. Like I'm gonna make him with a huge <laughs> nose, and um, sort of thing. And for the bridge, you can kind of make a separate. Like if I duplicate this again, and by the way, the hotkey I'm using to duplicate uh, it's Control Shift D. You can duplicate without having to go here and click duplicate. So I kind of like. I'm going to make a bridge for the nose here. Um, and I'm going to rotate this. Being very free. And again, like I'm using move, very big move brush. I'm just kind of like blocking some level of like silhouette for it. And again, if you press V, you can kind of see the silhouette, what's going on. Um, and looking from the front view, we can kind of like Oh, maybe the bridge is like super thin and he has like a big, big nose sort of thing. Uh, because he has this big nose, I would say like maybe I can make his jaw a little thinner sort of thing. Just kind of like I'm, I'm, now I'm designing, right? Um, I'm like thinking about this character now. I'm like, OK, he might be maybe like a sort of like goofy guy and, and <laughs> uh, you know, sort of fun. I love how you're kind of animating him right now, too. Like you're. Right. The life, the life of the character. So, like, because he's like that, maybe I can like, oops, um, I can make his ears even bigger in some way. You know, like, sort of like, do very big, big shapes, and maybe his eyes is gonna be super tiny and funny. You know, um, I'm gonna push this out a bit more. Um, looking from the front view, this is just gonna give a little more neck here. And for the neck, if you want, if you hold control and you click on the, on the scale, X's, you can kind of clip your mesh. You see that it's clipping. Um, and then you can kind of have this sharp break here. So, so clipping the mesh. And I'm going to give him a long, long uh, neck. He's going to be very, like, long sort of character. And I'm going to smooth this in a bit because too, too much poking out. But again, like I like you can notice that I start zooming out a lot because I like to see very tiny and kind of get a feeling of what's going on. Press change the color for black to see the silhouette of what's going on. So for example, um here I'm gonna make his cranium area sort of like almost like imagine this simple shape like this. This is his head, and then we have the nose coming out. So I'm gonna do that sort of thing, uh, you know. And we can give some character to the neck, sort of like throw a bit like he's having, he has his um, head a little forward like this or something, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna actually um, 
squish everything like a little bit like this. I want his head to feel thin from the profile and feel pretty thin from the front view as well, like so. We can scale up. And you can see I'm like scaling everything together, which is fine. We're finding the characters. Not like we're, we're really modeling anything crazy yet. But you can start to see that I'm pushing. And we started with something uh, like this. Where is it? Nope, that's not it. We started with something like this. Like this. Those are all really cool, by the way. Everything. Yeah, I'll show you guys. Through. I'm going to show yeah. you in a second. But this is kind of like the drawing I did, right? If I put mm -hmm. it here, it's pretty similar, right? So we started with this. And sometimes I like to put the, the this torus just so like I know where the eye line is and etc. Even exactly like we do in drawing. So we started with mm -hmm. this, right? And then we're kind of like here now. So we're designing in 3D at the same time, right? Um, I can go here. I'm just going to make his nose again. Sort of it fun. seems like you could even just with what you started with, the starting point. Right. Just from that as a base, you could start making different versions, stretching it out into like totally different characters. Exactly. And like, th th that's exactly what I want to show here. So that's the same thing. Who is this? Mr. Yeah, that's Mr. Incredible. Incredible. So let me put a shader here. So. You can see that, like, okay, I know that this is Mr. Incredible. Do I have a bunch of details there? No. I only have exact same shapes that we did on the other one. You see? Same thing here. Who is this guy? Klaus, right? Yeah, awesome. Look at that. That's Klaus. Again, very simple, very clean shapes, low res shit, right? Um, we have here <laughs> a character from Ice Age in... Uh, kind of like honor of blue sky closing. <laughs> we have this guy here again. Like I'm, I'm really looking big shape silhouette yeah. stuff. You know. So if we go back to our guy here, you guys can already predict right where we're going with this. And this is where I start everything. If I show this model, for example, okay. Let me go back here. If I show this model, that's exactly the same way that I started. I started with the cranium area. I had a, a cranium area. Then I had my lower half of the face area. I put my line here for the eye, had my ears, throw my neck. And by the way, this this um, uh, draw, this model is the concept from this amazing, amazing artist. Let me just show you guys uh, her art station. Her name mm -hmm. is Maggie Grace Cruz. And she has a bunch of cool, like, I just want to model everything she does. And I did model a few. I did this one. I also did, let me find it here. This girl here, um, which I'll show you guys now, which is this These one. are beautiful. These are yeah, great. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so good to study proportions and push things. Um, I love, I love making her stuff. This is so fun. Uh, but it all started the same way. This is the exact same way as I'm doing here, you know? Um, so let's say like, okay, this is kind of like the block out of our character. Uh, where do we go from here now, right? And you can do this, like I have this character here, you guys can see. You can imagine now that all the parts on this character, they all came from spheres, <laughs> all of them. I think only the leg I made like um, a cylinder or something, I guess. But again, like very basic shapes. Um, if I um, turn off here, uh, put here, you guys can see, like I was really focusing on the silhouette read and everything. And then after I have a great silhouette, that's when I start adding details inside it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So we did this, right? So maybe we can think about like, okay, let me give a little bit of, again, I'm thinking about silhouette. Like, maybe this is too simple. Let's give him a little bit of, of forehead, maybe. Um, I'm going to um, sort of, like, give this sort of angle. So now we're getting, like, this sort of break like this. You see? Um, always, always working on the silhouette. The moment you find your silhouette of your character, it's much easier to make everything else work, you know? So you can see here, I'm pressing V to change the color. Whoops, zebra, save me. 
Um, yeah, I should save it too. But um, uh, we've got a question that's come in for you. Um, it looks like you're using a secondary software off to the left there, with like some some drawing tools and stuff like that. All right, like this that. is this is a thing because I teach a lot, so I mm -hmm. found this. I can't remember. Someone told me to use this, but it's called Epic Pen. Okay. I love drawing with this teaching and, and not even teaching. Sometimes I'm studying stuff and I start drawing on top to just, just kind of get, get the feeling if it's working yeah. the way I want. So, and it's, it's free. There is a paid version that you have more options here, but you can download the free version and you can draw the same way that I'm doing right now. Okay. So Epic Pan. That's, that's the, cool. The thing. Yeah. I love it. It's pretty cool. Um, Cool. So um, let's say like, okay, maybe I could even push his design a little more. Again, remember I was talking about tapering shapes and such. So like for him, maybe I'm going to even taper this more and maybe give him a little more volume up here. I'm just thinking about what are the decisions I can make to sort of give him this kind of goofy, uh, slim sort of character, you know type of thing and um we can do that uh, we can maybe we can try one thing i like trying is to move the eye line so like what if i move the eye line super high like let's see what happens right just imagine that it's gonna be a little eye here going on so i'm gonna move the eye line very high um you gotta use a imagination, which you guys have, because you all to the artists. <laughs> um, again, I can even like, what if this goes even lower? I'm really trying to push it here. Um, things with him. We could, yeah, something like this. So again, I'm like getting to the Klaus vibe almost now. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually imagining kind of like a really goofy physics professor or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, Just yeah, we can put it. We can add some glasses to it. Just keep <laughs> me track on time because I can Absolutely. stay on this stage for a long time. Like I love just staying on this stage yeah. and push and pull. Well, and Our, it, it was amazing to me because I I do more realism, um, but in working stylized with simple shapes like this, it's like immediately fun. It's you so get your fun. basic it's shapes so out fun. there, and you're just having yeah. a great time. And you can see here, like he's a very soft guy, right? So. My idea is like keep soft shape sort of thing. If I start adding like edging on it, let's say like I add an edge here and then I start adding, you can see that it's cool too. It, I mean, it might work, you know, but you gotta be aware of what is the language that you're using on your character, right? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes when you wanna make a character that's like, we don't know if he's a protagonist or if he's antagonist, you, can, you might mix some soft and harsh sh shapes and you might create that vibe is like, is he a nice guy? Is he going to become a villain or at some mm. point, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> so, okay. I'm, I'm good with this shape for now. Um, okay. Let's start adding some details. Do you have any other questions? Uh, I got one question that's come in uh, from, uh, let's see, Aman uh, Sandu. It says, hi guys, thanks for doing this. Question is, is this workflow doable when designing more realistic characters? It's totally doable. Um, if you watch, uh, there's an amazing Brazilian artist called um, Rafael Grossetti. He, you can see some of the videos he does this sort of technique as mm -hmm. well in the beginning. Um, and then like, if I show this to you guys, where is it? all the exact same technique, I'm just taking spheres and yeah. shaping to things, right? So if you, if you see this model, they're all spheres. You can see low rest spheres that I'm just shaping to make um, structure. This is a structure Great. way of working, right? Yeah. And you could certainly use that. And I see some people go crazy where they block all the muscle, all the muscles with different spheres. You can block so many things with a lot of spheres yeah. and you can get pretty cool look to things. Uh, Geo and Upkill does a lot of that. Geo you does that a lot, exactly. Yeah, with and even I'm, just individual I'm, muscles, yeah. Right, I'm studying, uh, uh, I'm using a, a medium right now, like learning how to use. Mm. And I watched a lot of Geo's videos. And I'm like, oh my God, yes. We work the same way, so I feel good. I, I, 
I maybe I know what I'm doing, you know, if Gio is doing. So. <laughs> oh, and and uh, Raphael's amazing. Yeah. He, I mean, he kind of blurs the lines between realism and stylized too in a really cool way. Yeah. Um, so that sort of thing. Um, yeah. So let's say like, okay, so where do we go from here now? Right. Let's say we're happy with this. Um, how do we combine and start sculpting, um, etc. One thing I like to do before I combine is, um, as we can see on this model here, okay, um, when we are model, uh, in general, we have those this sort of like shape that goes in and out sort of thing on the face. You can see here, this in and out here, you know? So we can have this sort of like cavity for the eye because of the structure of the cranium, the, yeah, the cranium itself, the skull, we have this cavity here that we have to compensate for it. And obviously in cartoon, it, it doesn't need to be anything crazy, but what I like to do before I merge things, I like to just like take this front area here and throw it in a bit. Mm. And then I take the lower half and throw it in a bit. So I'm just creating that sort of shape, see? Yeah. Um, um, you can think of it as like this sort of shape. This. And you can see on this model that I have that here as well. See, I have this going in, and then we have that. Okay. So I like to force that in before I merge things. I feel like it helps me when I'm uh, starting to block the eye structure. And again, like let's make sure things are in the place they should be. So I'm just going to push the whole jaw area a little bit more forward. And for the ridge of the nose, just kind of like give a little, um, let me give a little volume here. Again, it's nice to look from the top view. In general, a cranium uh, shape, it's sort of like an egg, but with um, a, low, a smaller piece on, let, let me draw with this, <laughs> it's easier. Uh, it's like a lower egg like this, but you can see that this area is a bit more wide than this area in a way. So it's kind of like an egg, inverted egg sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take this and maybe give a little more volume in the back. Take a little volume whoops, from the front. You kind of get that shape in there. Cool. Awesome. You know, the other thing is so cool about what we're doing today is like, Guys, if you listen between the lines of what Leticia is doing, you're also getting an awesome character design lesson for free. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is really good stuff. Awesome. I'm glad you like it. Another thing before we merge, maybe I'm going to do just a little bit of shaping on this nose instead of keeping like perfect round. Again, mm -hmm. like I'm looking at silhouette, a silhouette, and I'm like, instead of having this sort of like round thing, I'm like creating some, what I like to call, and I learned that at Noman, which is called apex, right? It's like, where is the point where the curve hits its final um, kind of highest point, and then it starts changing direction, right? So that's what I'm trying to, oops, trying to do here. I'm just kind of like forcing a little bit of shape that I can get like, whoop, and then I have my apex here, and mm -hmm. then I go in. Right, so that sort of thing. Cool. Uh, looking from the front, and just gonna make sure. Okay, that's enough. I, I can massage stuff forever. I'm gonna tell <laughs> you. So let's just uh, merge things. I'm just gonna see. Nah, let's keep his nose like that. All right. So what I do now is that I want to merge everything and start sculpting from it. Right. So I'm gonna go to the top of my my object here and i'm going to just say merge down so i'm going to go merge merge down and I, he's going to ask do you want to do this i said sure and then I, again merge down merge down and i'm going to put everything in one subtool so now i have everyone in one subtool they're not combined yet but they're all in one subtool right cool so now if i start moving things they're gonna move together because they're in the same subtool. See, they're moving together, right? Remember, it's this is very low res. Look at that. Yeah. 
This is because I had subdiv dynamic subdivision on, but this is how it looks. And this is great because again, it, it helps you not mess up anything with the shape at this point, right? And I could even um, get here, start adding a little more shaping here, whatever. Okay, so let's move on. How are we doing on time, just so I know? Um, let's see, we're, we probably got about another um, 15, 20 minutes 15? tops. Maybe oh, 15 minutes, yeah. Okay, let's speed up. <laughs> but this is important, guys. This is the time I spend a lot of time to find my characters, designing my characters, mm -hmm. you know. So oh, I'm going to... Leticia, we can push the time a little bit, too. It's not a problem. Make sure you, okay. you do what you want to do. Cool. So I'm going to subdivide this. Well, now subdivide for real, not using the dynamic subdivision. I'm going to do Control-D. So Control-D, Control-D a few times. And we kind of have that clean shape again, but with subdivisions. And then I'm going to go DynaMesh this, right? So we can start working on it. So I'm going to go here, Geometry, um, where is it? DynaMesh, and I'm going to say DynaMesh. So now we have this shape, OK? And DynaMesh sometimes does these squiggly things because I'm working pretty. It's a low rise DynaMesh. I'm not going crazy yet with anything. So if you want, you could turn on this Polish button. And if I click DynaMesh again, you guys will see that it gives like a little polish on the mm. one. It's kind yeah. of nice. I like that. So I did a polish. Cool. My model is there. All right. So what do we do now? Right. So I'm going. One thing that I like to do, as you guys can see from some of my models, not this one soft, but some of these models, you can see that I have some definitions of the plane of the face, etc. Mm -hmm. So even though this is going to be a soft character, I'd rather have those planes defined and then have to soften them later than not have them because then it becomes kind of like a blob anyway. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start, whoops, let me, I'm going to start defining some planes here. So let's say like here, here, are you doing anything? Oh, I revert my DynaMesh, sorry. Let me DynaMesh again. All right, now we have it. So here, I'm going to start defining. What's going on? Sorry. DynaMesh. Oh, it's a tool. Let me reset my brushes here. Where is it? OK, now we're in game again. Not where I want. Okay, now I have it. So here's gonna be my my forehead area. Here's gonna be my eye area. Again, you got the planes of the face. I'm just like defining slowly the planes of the face here. So I'm like, okay, so this is gonna be here. Are and you using for, a pinch brush for that, or are you kind of drawing in those those angles? You can use um, them standard. I'm okay. using a custom brush. It's called M A H Cut. Um, it's kind of like a combination of them standard and pinch this brush. Oh, cool. so okay. It's a fun one. It's, it's made for hard surface stuff, but I use a lot. So if you download, I don't know who made it, but if you type MAH cut in um, Google, you find it. So I'm sort of like blocking some ideas here. And like, again, like I'm, I'm making, um, I'm not saying I'm going to keep this sharpness. That's not at all what I'm going to do. I'm just doing so I can have the light breaks from far and I can visualize the structure of my camera. Hmm. Okay. Someone's wondering um, what you're using. Are you like, are you using a tablet, you using a, a Cintiq? What are you drawing with? I use tablet. I, I, I never got very into Cintiq. Um, I use tablet a lot. Uh, when I'm blocking shapes like the stage before this one, I sometimes only use the mouse because okay. I don't want to sculpt. I only want right. to move things. So you kind of limit yourself. So I limit myself. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. So I, it's funny. Sometimes I don't even notice. I'm like with moving stuff with my mouse, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you can see that like we all from 2D, 
right? We all study um, the planes of the face. And for those of you who don't, don't know that, you can Google, um, where is, it? is this the one? No, here. If I go here and I type planes of the face, you're gonna see a bunch of planes of the face studies that you can follow. Um, yeah. So, you know, like this is a good one. You can see this, there, there's a little more detail on this one, but if you think in a very simple way, this is sort of like how it's supposed to work, Yeah. right? And you can see some models, some ideations of how people interpret the planes of the face. So my way of interpreting is it's much simpler because I work with cartoons. So, you know, I basically create this sort of like um, this division here. You guys just saw this one. So I, I have this kind of like back, whoops, sort of like back shape now. So I can three-dimensionalize the eyes when I add it. Okay. Oh yeah. And then you have this sort of like thing here. And and obviously the zygomatic bone is gonna come at some point, but we're not there yet, right? Um so I'm so glad you brought up the planes of the face and facial anatomy because a lot of times it's, or sometimes younger artists that like to do stylized stuff, they'll spend their time like studying other stylized things only. Right. Um, but could you share with us, you know, because sometimes studying anatomy, it's it looks like realism, right? Well, that's not the kind of art I want to make. But right. why is it important for an artist that wants to do stylized like this to right. um, pay attention to the more academic uh, drawing stuff? I like to say, like, everything looks better when it's based on nature, right? Everything looks more believable or appealing because nature is the greatest designer, right, of all times. Like, not just human body, I'm saying like all nature, like everything, mm -hmm. how the procedural effects in nature happens and etc. So I think I love I love anatomy because of that, because I can I can uh, learn them and break them as I want. But it's still having that taste of believability, believability, whatever that word is said. And um, also again like nature is where we based our design that's the greatest designer right so that's kind of why i love studying anatomy um because of it so mm -hmm. i can learn it and break it if needed yeah cool thank you yeah no problem so here for the ears for example we can kind of like smooth this transition a little bit and we could potentially um kind of like again like big strokes um I like sort of like, okay, I'm gonna block very low res, as you guys can see. I'm gonna block kind of like the the whole part of it, of the year here, slowly. Again, if anything you take from this uh, live today is to work with intention. I'm mm. just like, you know, there's a lot of artists and I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm definitely not saying anything's wrong, whatever floats your boat, right? But one thing I, lo uh, I don't do is you see artists doing this, right? And then they're like, oh, the mouth's gonna be here and here's gonna be like his nostrils and whatever. That is, for me, at least on my, the way my brain works, this is not working with intention in a way, you know? Like when I do slow, and you guys can see I'm a very slow modeler, when I do slow, I, I'm really like thinking about the design all the time, all the time. And I'm not losing control at any point. I'm like trying to keep control of all my shapes, you know. And that's something I learned. I had a great teacher. Uh, his name is uh, Mike DeFeo. Uh, Google him. He has amazing kind of stylized art. And I learned from him. So like I used to be a modeler that model like this, I like putting things. And I'm like, okay, this is the eye. Blah, blah. And it's so easy for you to kind of like lose track of, of the intentions of the design, you know, and you kind of like, anyways, you guys get it, the idea, but like, I like yeah. to move very slow things and I'm like really thinking and looking at the whole all the time. Like, again, like you guys can see, like I do something, I zoom out to see what's going on, you know? Um, so, and that's an easy, I think there's an easy trap to fall into when you're watching a lot of YouTube tutorials or YouTube demonstrations, which which is great to do, but a lot right. of times those are sped up a little bit, right? 
Um, oh, yeah, for sure. And you you're forget like, that the artist's not going you know, like really fast. You're right. And we think we have to kind of be busy when we're making something, whereas they're probably moving slower than you think they are. Right, yeah. So, like, exactly. So, like, I'm, you know, just trying to do things here. Um, now that I have the shapes in, um, this is going too far. Okay, but I don't want to stay in one place for too long, just so I can show you guys some things. But now, mm -hmm. the, um, and if you get bothered by how low res it is, you can always turn on dynamic subdivision. Because I'm working with a, a low res uh, dynamesh, so you can see that it's breaking some stuff. But instead of subdividing, I just turn on dynamic subdivision, and then you can kind of see what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. And I can, like, I added my planes. I can start smoothing them a little bit. Um, for the eyes, um, one thing that I like to do in general is, like, I, I block, like, a little volume. Mm -hmm. Almost like if the character had his eyes closed, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I block a little volume, just like, okay, his eyes are closed in a way. Just so I can kind of get the feeling if the size is good. And you can even use a, a, a sphere. Like, if you don't want to do like this, you can append the new sphere. Again, I'm going to pick a polysphere, low res. And you can place it there and get the feeling. So, like, I'm going to put it mm -hmm. here, sort of thing. The chat's wanting to know um, when you're designing your characters, are you doing it mostly just straight up uh, in ZBrush, or do you spend time designing in 2D first? I do not. I do it all in ZBrush. <laughs> and what you've shown us today really makes sense because right. if you yeah, keep it simple. Yeah, because I'm thinking like a 2D person. Yeah. But I'm applying straight in 3D. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not, um, I do, I'm going to be very honest. Like I, I, I have much more fun designing 3D than 2D. And that's why I chose it. Obviously, everyone is different. If you feel mm -hmm. more that it's more fun for you first to do in, in 2D do it but for me i'd rather design in 3d um sometimes if i'm doing like iterations of like shapes and silhouette i might do it in 2d first um i'm gonna put it even closer like i want him to be very very tiny eyes nice. yeah i can definitely tell that you've you've done some study and you've done your homework in 2d though with your understanding of form and, and silhouette and that kind of stuff right yeah, yeah. and again um, like try not to well, I wouldn't say that's a rule, but like if he has some big features, mm -hmm. if you when you add smaller things, it creates one word that's so important to me, which is contrast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a big, big word in design, right? So I'm thinking about that because imagine if this character had this size of nose, which is very similar size from the ears, and then I had a very similar size on the eyes. It's everything starts being too even and kind of boring, you know what I mean? Yep. So maybe even on the ears, I need to do something because it is it is very similar, the size now that yeah. we're talking about it, you know? So um, this is what I'm trying to create, some contrast. And we could even push it more, I don't know. Oh, we yeah. Could, yeah, we can think about what we can break here. I know we're running out of time. <laughs> But, One of our viewers wants to uh, is looking for advice on uh, how to create appeal in your characters when you're designing them. Yeah, appeal a lot of times for me, it's it's a it's a word that it, it's it's very tricky because sometimes it's different from other people. I would say like appeal. It's a word that it can work on many different sort of designs. Like for example, if you look at this design, right? Wow, this has so much appeal, right? Uh, a lot of times, again, going back to the word contrast, contrast, the R, okay? Um, you have this sort of like soft area and then you have some sharps and then you have a sharp going to nothing, to soft. And then you have very clear sort of like silhouette going on, you know? Um, a lot of that appeal is a combination of a lot of design choices, which are those designs I was talking about, which is like tape, tapering shapes, um, curves versus straight, um, 
um, in 3D, thinking about 3D, you have sharp versus smooth, meaning uh, exactly what I just said, meaning like you have this sharp decision here and then it goes to smooth. This is so appealing because um, sometimes a person that might be a beginner, you might think, oh, she has this definition here, so I'm going to make it all the way, you know, and then you start having like very big, sharp things going on. And if you start playing with the idea of like the brain connects the dots, like this mm -hmm. shape, we can kind of see that it ends here, but the brain is connecting the dots. You don't need to do that on your model. You know what I mean? Like, for example, I could even take this and maybe when it starts getting here, you can see that it already starts getting smooth. Again, like this is the bony area. So I'm making sharp. The moment that it gets more like on this part that's flat, it starts getting mm -hmm. smooth, you know? So I'll say appeal. It's a lot of those, those uh, ABCs of design, which tape, curve straight, um, the, the contrast, right? Big, medium, small, and you have a sharp, sharp versus smooth, um, etc. You know, mm -hmm. so. That's kind of like, that's why it's important to study 2D because you learn that much more in 2D than you would expect to learn in 3D in a way. So. Um, yeah, there's so much abstraction in 2D because you're you're pulling off the trick of taking a two-dimensional image and making it feel three-dimensional. Um, so it's either there or it's not <laughs> in a right. two-dimensional image. All right. Um, yeah, so like one thing I like to do for the mouth sometimes, I just like, I make a little mask. Um, oops, I make a little mask for the area of the mouth. I'll make a little smaller. And then, <laughs> this looks funny, but whatever. And then I make a mask, I uh, push it in a little bit, that mask. And then I start shaping, you know? So, like I'm just gonna oh, yeah. remember the face, right? The face. Um, if we think about like the maxillar, um, the teeth, it's curved like this. So you gotta make the lips follow that shape in a way, right? So I, I'm not saying you have to. There's some designs there of uh, the mouth is flat and it's totally fine, but the decisions I'm making here, his mouth has some shape for it, right? So I just kind of like shaping that sort of arc, arch, um shape and you can see <laughs> that we have this it's kind of like uh, I always like to make a, a mouth bag because when you make the lips touch there's a depth to the lips that if you don't make them like if you sculpt without a mouth bag inside what happens to your lips is that it becomes like this mm -hmm. you know sort of like you don't have depth here going in when you model the mouth bag, what happens is that the lips comes out and then you have the top lip it goes into the mouth bag and then you have the lower lip going and then you create this this very sharp shadow here, which which is what mm. we want. We don't want this yeah. sort of like soft feeling. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so I make the mouth bag. I keep the mouth semi-open until I add new topology like a uh, um, not new topology, but I do zero mesh or something. Like, so I'm gonna just like shape, and you can see, look how I'm moving. Big brush, small movements. Mm -hmm. Like some people, they're like, bang, 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 and then you start breaking everything. You know, um, you gotta, we, you know, we're here to give love to this character and find this character, talk to it. You know, gotta be nice to it. So that's awesome. <laughs> You almost find a little bit of Bob Ross territory there. Yeah, you gotta, you know, you gotta you put character. little trees, paint little <laughs> trees, talk yeah. to him, you know, get to know him. Um, so that's kind of like a big uh, open mouth. And again, like I'm very low rest still, as you guys remember. Look at this, it's like low rest. So at this stage, I'm not gonna start defining the lips or anything. I'm just putting shapes there. Okay. Um, I could potentially, I don't know if this character would have um, a nostril, but I could potentially try to block a little volume 
and see what happens. Let's see. It's not bad. We could use the move tool and just kind of like move it in a little. Um, yeah, I've never, I've never really done stylized, but you're making me want to try. This looks so fun. It, dude, it's much more fun than realistic. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Everyone's different, but for yeah. me, I have much more fun doing stylized. Than well, and I, I was, uh, uh, was a great artist at uh, Santa Monica Studio, uh, Della Longfish. He's a fantastic Oh, yeah, he's awesome. Uh, designer. Yeah. Great, great 2D artist. Um, he was talking about how, um, you know, he does a lot more realism looking stuff, but he also learned stylized right. and it actually helped his realism. Made it, he made can it do it all that guy, man. He's awesome. Um, so sort of like blocking some ideas here. Let's see. Yeah, he's starting to look really good. <laughs> I don't know really good, but. Like, well, I can almost imagine what his voice sounds like, right? Like, I feel like yeah. there's character there now. <laughs> okay. I'm smoothing around. And uh, for the eye area, I'm going to give a little more depth on this area here. And we could potentially, just like if you turn on transparency, you can start um, building a little lid here. And let me turn off. You can see. Well, I'm too low res still, but let's just do this. I'm going to high res it just for the sake of time. Mm -hmm. And we could start rocking like a little eyelid. And you don't need to do it this way. Like you could, I like to do it this way because I'm a bit lazy, but you could use some uh, geometric shapes as well to build it and then dynamesh it again. Mm -hmm. But I like to go like this. I'm just blocking the place of the eyelid. Smooth a little bit. We can get a sharp brush and sort of like define that that line over there, so we can see. Again, like sometimes because I like I do drawing as well, I like to sharp things so I can see where it's gonna start, where it's gonna end, and then I go and smooth back, you know, um, sort of thing. So we can take this. I'm gonna push this in a bit. Give some some shape like this, and and. We can, again, like what I just said, sometimes I just do some sharks so I can see the plane changes. And later on, I'm gonna smooth it back, you know? So you're gonna, like a lot of my students, they know this, but I do a lot of like sharp and then I soft and sharp and I soft because I'm always constantly try to see the planes of the face and then soften the character, you know, sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna again define this line, define this line for now, zoom out, we can start seeing what's going on. Same thing here, like we can um, kind of like model in a little bit this, so we can have the lip, same thing here, I'm gonna model in a little bit. And I don't like to be this dirty, I'm just doing dirty because we, we don't have much time. But I work clean, and this is not acceptable, guys. If you ever take my class, do not do that. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna like it. Okay. Um, so yeah. What, so what is the class that you're teaching at Noman right now? If people want to look it up. Well, I'm, I don't, I'm not teaching at Noman right oh, now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but you were, you were for a time. I was. Yeah. So right. it was fun because Noman let me make my own class. Oh wow. So yeah, like I was talking with one of uh, Max, one of the awesome number people and and i was like can i invent my own class like cartoon classes like do it pitch it for us and if we like it we do it and then i pitch it for them and they loved it and it's a class in the curriculum now but it's not taught by me anymore like i had to take a break from it but it's um i don't know exactly right now who is teaching the class i know but it's always right. some awesome stylized oh, yeah. artists and uh, like all our instructors are presently working studio artists. Like right, right. Currently working on it's projects. Someone awesome. Just let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. So um, here we can like kind of like mask and start pulling the corner of the mouth sort of thing. And again, I'm doing fast here, but I work much slower than this. Mm -hmm. um, and again, guys, if you're seeing Leticia do stuff like the masking and things, Go back to last week's stream uh, and, and watch it because Josh, you know, showed us how to use those basic tools to get this stuff done. Yeah. 
And again, trying to clean. I don't want anything wobbly. Wobbly, it's not your friend in cartoon. Sometimes in realistic stuff, the wobbliness gives a certain level of texture that looks cool. Mm -hmm. But not in cartoon, guys. Yeah, it immediately know. shows up as weird contrast. Exactly. And, yeah. Um, we got an interesting question that's come in on the chat. How do you sculpt in 3D when given a 2D concept that's not that appealing? <laughs> oh, man. Um, and we're not asking you to throw anybody under the bus here. <laughs> no, no, ever. Not ever. Yeah. Um, what I do sometimes is is that what I like to do is it's I put my own spin on things sometimes and see what happens. You know what I mean? Like if you show the directors and something and they're like, oh yeah, I love how you created the shape here that it wasn't in the concept. You're like, okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but you got to make it work somehow. And you got to remember like in movies, the 2D design is not the final design. The 3D artist needs to finish that design in 3D, you know? Yep. So there are some artists, I'm not going to lie, that, that they copy straight the concept that that's it. And they're very good at them. But some people like myself, I like to try to bring a little bit of something that I, as my design choices, and sometimes it sticks and sometimes it doesn't, right? You got to be open. Got to mm -hmm. remember in a movie, it's not your vision. It's not the concept artist's vision. It's a collective vision. Mm -hmm. So you got to remember that so you don't get too attached to the things you do at work. You know, that's a, such an important point, what you're saying, because I think a lot of times, uh, you know, 2D artists out there who love to draw and design characters, right, haven't right. tried 3D, 3D or doing production art, which is taking the 2D design, turning it into a 3D model. Um, sometimes they'll think, you know, oh, well, that, you just have to be a copy machine at that point. You're not really doing anything creative. You're just right. following someone else's creative decisions. But that's not what you just said. Is it you, you to translate into 3D? You've got to be a designer. Right. And again, it's a collective vision. It's not yours. It's not, it is everyone's vision. So you got to remember that um, you're going to have a little bit of, of you in it and someone else is going to have a little bit of it, but it's not, a, it's not just you, right? Um, so, okay. I think you guys got the idea kind of like how I go about things. I do not like to work in Dynamesh for too long. Sometimes what I do is I, I do a zero mesher, so at least it's a bit cleaner. There's not, you see this lumpies going on here? If you do a zero mesher, it's gonna go away. So, um, but if you keep doing stuff and cleaning and not being messy like this, um, you're gonna get somewhere mm -hmm. like this, right? Or any other style that you going for it. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like my process uh, as a 2D thinking as a 2D artist, in a way. Yeah, um, and this is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted to accomplish today. Um, a lot of times when you when you have a professional artist show you something, they're already working at such a high finished level that you mm -hmm. miss the beginning stages, and so it's so great that you unpacked. Kind of those really important beginning shapes and how right. to use the brush to do that yeah right and uh again like remember the word contrast okay let me write it trust intention is it how you write intention in english uh yeah you're asking yeah the wrong guy yeah. <laughs> because I, I i lived in a couple other countries i think it's a t and let's play like contrast intention <laughs> <laughs> Contrast. I'm from Brazil, guys. Okay, take a just give me a break. Intention and um, apex. So apex meaning where the shape has a peak and it turns, has a peak and it turns, has mm. a peak and it turns. You know, these decisions are important because the more you sharp you get, it's a different intention from the softer those apexes feel. There's a difference, right? And that's going to create, in this case, this character has a lot of sharp transitions and that's the intention of the concept, right? So that's where I'm going with, okay? Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you want to do some final questions and then closing? Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, guys, if there's, I've, I've, we're 
finished with the questions that have been sent through to me. If there's a couple of last minute questions to come in, go ahead and type them now, guys. I've got a couple of questions for Leticia. Um, mm. One is, I'm, you know, I'm sure we've got artists out there that Disney would be like their dream studio to work at, and they would love to to do the kind of stuff that you're doing. Um, for a younger artist, knowing what you know about Disney and what's important to that studio, what would you suggest that they focus on in their art as as they're seeking to grow? I would say design, like mm -hmm. uh, focus on your art with design. Focus on story, like what kind of story are you trying to tell with those characters, you know? Focus on pushing some design choices. Like, this is the kind of stuff I do on my free time, which is completely different from Disney. But it's forcing me to think other design ideas. And then when I do things like this, I bring new ideas to maybe a Disney style or whatever studio style, you know? So... And like you said, um, um, Adam, like you can study realistic and it's gonna add to your, to your stylized design. Like I took a class with an amazing Brazilian artist. His name's Rafael Souza, not Grassetti mm -hmm. Souza, but he's a super realistic guy. And I took a class with him and I did some realistic sculpting, you know, like I have here, here I can show you guys. Wait a minute. If I go to my Insta, Instagram, I took a class with him, and I was doing my own uh, sort of like twist, stylized twist on things because that's how I am. I wasn't trying to do anything super, super realistic, but you see, this is stylized, but it has a lot of um, realism uh, shapes on it in a way. And so all of this is going to bring to you you know, it's going to bring new ideas to you. So like this, for example, I did this little sculpture, which is a little more realistic, but it, you can see again, my stylized eye is always there in a sense. It's not fully realistic in a way. And that's sort of like the, I try to tap on all the styles. And every time I do that, I bring, you can see here, this sort of like a in between realism and a lot of stylization in the modeling, but more realistic on the texturing. And yeah. again, you can see that I'm trying to tap different things and experiment, etc. you know? So um, here you have your very uh, Disney, not Disney, but like very designy cartoon feel to things, you know? So you can play um, a lot with shapes, right? Like Prince of Egypt, you can see uh -huh. like, exact same principles that we used or separating things blah 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 exact same principles on this piece so just have fun you know like my and try different things you mm -hmm. don't need to like if you're studying realistic stuff it's not making you a worse stylized artist <laughs> it's just making you better mm -hmm. in the opposite as well like some people that do realistic stuff when they tap into stylized when they go back they can really prioritize shapes and make more appealing, realistic things. You Definitely. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so we've got a few more questions that have come in. Uh, okay. Uh, along lines, I think a little bit what you're talking about right now, how do you pick a great concept to model? Like when you're looking for something you want to make? It's uh, for me, it's obviously I have a taste, right? Mm -hmm. Some people have different tastes. Like this is very appealing to me, for example. Um, uh, what I look for is what I want to learn from that concept. You know, like for example, in this case, this artist, she's very good at defining planes of the face and pushing them. So this is what I want to learn from this concept, you know, and I try to push it as far as I can. Uh, if you go to my art station, like for example, on this one, what is it that I wanted to learn? I wanted to learn how to make very clean, basic shapes and make it very dynamic and fun in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's always about like, what do I want to learn in a certain way? Um, and also what I want to tell. Like, for example, this piece here, I wanted to tell this kind of like companionship story of um, this guy's with the high energy, he's singing, but his dog is completely opposite. <laughs> it's like sleeping, but they both communi together in a way, you know? Yeah. They're both like communicating in a very different contrasty way. And his head is facing, uh, let me get the pen here. So this guy is like 
blah. This one's like sleepy. His head is facing this way. His head is facing this way. But then there is this triangle structure on them that makes them have, a, it's like you can tell that they have a great relationship. Yeah. Just great, right? And they, they have, so that's sometimes like in this case, is, is I wanted to focus on like this sort of like contrast view communion story, you know? So a lot of times it's about story as well for me, right? Like this is a piece I did when I was a Norman student, but you can see there's like this hopefulness, brightness going on him. He has a very clear expression of happiness when he's playing, right? Mm -hmm. And there is this like kind of like yellowish tone and a little purplish tone, a very like happy daylight yeah. sort of. This is a great example of story too, because you could have chosen to give more attention to his hand playing the piano, but that's right. not the story you're but telling. That's not it. It's in shadow yeah. because it's about his happiness doing whatever he's doing at that yeah, moment. That's right? great. Um, one example that I always show is this one as well, right? So you have this sort of like light separating the real feelings, the sadness on this family. And then here you have this sort of like gossip feeling where mm -hmm. they're not like super sad about anything. Uh, they're there. They may be trying to think about like, oh, who do you think is going to get his money now that he's yeah. dead or something, you know? Yeah. And there is this cool and warm sort of light separating them, you know? So sometimes it's not just about the model, but it's about what kind of story as an artist you want to tell, yeah. you know? Um, in this case, for example, for those of you who don't know, this is Jane Goodall. She's a um, big conser conservationist, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and what I wanted in this portrait is to really portrait her personality, which is like she deals with this very intense subjects of, you know, taking care of animals and aggression, but she has a very calm nature, you know? Yes. So that's what I wanted to to pass is like this super powerful woman, but she's like this super calm nature and almost like she's talking about fluffy things, but she's talking about deforestation and killing animals, but she's always calm and try to bring people to that calm place when she's talking about the subject, yeah. you know? Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Few more, that's a, and that's a brilliant. Uh, thank you for taking us through all of that. I mean, like I'm, like I said earlier, guys, you're not just getting a demo in ZBrush today. You're getting to hear from a Disney artist, like some really important design skills. Um, so we've got a few more questions that have come in now that we've got just enough time to address. Um, mm -hmm. Someone's wanting to know how much personal work you do and where you fit it into your schedule. I do personal work. I I like to study one hour a day. So right after I finish working, I eat dinner and then I come back to the computer and I do one hour of work normally for the week. So it's very little time. It's only one hour. But if you I notice that if I create that rhythm every day in my life, I can make things slowly, but I can still study. I can make things and and not get burned out because you don't want to get yeah. burned out. Right. Yeah. And an important thing is that I do appreciate my life beyond art, <laughs> right? I do have pets. I have a husband. I like uh, watching movies and such. So if I create a routine that I can stick to it, I'm still learning. I'm still studying. And I'm still having my life. And that's important to me. Like, I don't, I don't want to be that sort of artist that only thinks about their work. That's just not me. And if that's you, great. I mean, I'm not judging anyone. But that's not what I am. Mm -hmm. So normally if I study an hour, an hour and a half a day, I feel like I, I got a lot, of, a lot out, of, out of it from my project and I can go have fun in life and, and know that I'm still progressing, you know? Yeah, definitely. And sometimes on the weekends, I do like to do sometimes like if I have a weekend that I'm feeling energized and I want to do a project, sometimes I take a few hours on my weekend and I start doing things. But I try not to do too much on the weekend, yeah. Yeah, I think I you and we don't have time to get into it now, but I remember at Noman, you gave a really, as part of one of the talks you're doing, you awesome talk about, about burnout, how to avoid it. 
and you know not just if you get really inspired don't like go so hard that you squish all the inspiration out of yourself um right. so yeah and and you can go back and look at some of the past streams with leticia and uh, see some demonstrations as well as some excellent talks. Um, so our last uh, couple of questions is, do you ever sculpt clothing or armor when you're working on the characters? I do, like um, when I was on Overwatch, I do a lot of armor, so this mm. sort of armory stuff, right? Oh yeah. Um, what I like to do for this sort of things is like I sculpt and ZBrush the big shapes. So again, just think about silhouette of the shapes and then I bring to Maya and I model in Maya because mm. hard surface, for me at least, when I do in Maya, it has, again, clean intentions, clean definitions. I can control all the edges and stuff. Um, thinking about ZBrush, even if you're the cleanest modeler in ZBrush, sometimes I feel like I don't get the same kind of cleanness. So I sculpt in ZBrush. So again, I can design, I can find the size of things and proportions. And then I go to Maya and do uh, start doing the low rest model, you know? Gotcha, yeah. Um, so yeah, for clothing, uh, yeah, this again, like some armor uh, models that I did. And clothing, same, depending on the model, um, I do like to do it very low rest and then slowly add wrinkles to it. Again, like intention, right? It's like, if I'm building stuff, I do the big shape, and then I slowly start building some medium-sized shapes and maybe some very small shapes, etc. Yep. So always think about rough to fine, rough to fine, rough to fine. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the armor stuff here that I did, mainly on Overwatch, I, I haven't done much armor at Disney yet. Um, so, uh, it must be really cool to have done so many characters that are in so many people's hands, right? Like everybody has their favorite character they like to play in a game. Right. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Know? That's people really, really awesome. dig this Symmetra uh, mm -hmm. model I did. It's just, it was very fun. And um, yeah, it's awesome. Like I loved working in Overwatch. Uh, it was very challenging for me because mm -hmm. I wasn't very uh, good yet. Uh, sort of like this sort of hard surface modeling sort of stuff, but mm -hmm. it really put me out of my comfort zone and, and I learned it and I love it now. I love doing armor. Um, yeah. Um, so someone's wanting to know, uh, this is the last question of the day. Uh, okay. When you make a model, is it better to make it in a pose or directly, oh, sorry, in an A pose or directly sculpted in a position? It all depends. Like for example, this character here, I did already in pose because mm -hmm. it was for fun. Obviously, if you're doing production, they're gonna want you to do, well, actually that's not true. Like some animation studios, you, you, you we first do in pose and then we, we neutralize, we call neutralization paths. Mm -hmm. Because in pose, you can sell it better to the director. The director can see the character much better like this than if he was in a pose or T pose. Yeah. So it depends. Every studio has a different pipeline um as you can see here like when i was at blizzard like we would model things in a pose so i would model like this but when i was working for example in some places like dreamworks or and some animation studios we do first do sort of like a post version of it and then the director approves you can see here like this is my post version for the director Mm -hmm. And then after that, I need to neutralize it. So put it back to A pose or T pose. So it depends on the studio, I'd say. Yeah. Awesome. On my free time, I normally always do it in pose already, just because it's so fun to post things. Yeah. Now, if people want to follow you on uh, Instagram or find you on ArtStation, uh, should they just search your name or your what's your handle? Yeah, my ArtStation is Leticia Gillett. Mm -hmm. uh, and my Instagram, I think, is Leticia Gillette as well. Let me see. I think it's, uh, let's see. Yeah, Leticia, Gil Leticia Gillette Art. That's my Instagram. Awesome. Those cool. are, and Facebook, Leticia Gillette as well. But those are the only places I go. I try not to have too many social media. But yeah, that's sort of where you can find me. Most of the time I post stuff on Instagram. Our stations only when I finish a piece, then it's closed, it's done, I consider it done, then I post on our, sta on our yeah. station, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, Leticia, this has been super fun. 
Um, yeah. This has been a great stream. And I think, you know, even besides just those watching today, this is going to be really helpful. I'll, I'm going to be recommending this to uh, younger artists that I get to speak with that want to know, you know, what is ZBrush like and, and want to do stylized things. So I think we're going to get a lot of mileage out of this stream. Um, right. Yeah. Can you so, stop sharing my screen just for a second? Oh, sure. Um, cool. Yeah, and then for a last note for everyone out there to start to learning 3D, if you were 2D artist or if not, whatever it is, I would say like the, the best way to learn is to have fun, right? So some people are going to get to you and say like, oh, you should be doing cars because commercial houses, blah, 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 you know, or you should be doing realistic things or whatever. At the end of the time is your life. So you got to follow your heart in a way where it's like um i always heard many things that people suggesting me things and it's great you should hear suggestions and what i'm saying right now is a suggestion but at the end you got to talk to yourself and the best way to learn it's when you're having fun so if you're doing personal projects don't do because so and so from studio a and b said to you to do it do it what do you like to do because for me, what I feel is that the students respond to my portfolio because every single piece in my portfolio is something that comes from my heart. Mm. It's not like someone told me, like, hey, make a car, but blah, blah, blah. you're not going to see a car in my portfolio. You know, it might, a cartoon car, I would like to do that. <laughs> but what I, what I want to end with is take a little moment and talk to yourself and find out what the hell do you like to do. And if you don't know, that's fine too. Just start studying things and you're gonna, when you start studying, you're gonna find your path and 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 sort of like, oh, I love this. Oh, I don't like doing this. And, and um, but a lot of people are gonna be, have comments to say what you should do, what you shouldn't. And again, it's your life. You have to talk with yourself and take that responsibility to yourself. Don't give it to other people. That's mm. your life, you know? Yeah. And, um, I think that's the best way to learn and you're going to feel like you're growing and you're growing the way you want to grow. Not like anyone else. It's your life. It's your way of growing, you know? Yes. So. Thank you for that. that that's <laughs> great advice. Uh, especially when you're younger and you need to explore and learn, like keep yourself inspired. Um, right. let, let the love for what you do come through your art. Um, right. So again, every time we have you on the stream, we always receive so much more from you. Than, than than we we thought we would just do this, but this has been an amazing time. So much knowledge has been shared. Um, so thank you so much for giving of your time to be with us, Leticia. And yeah. uh, with that, I guys, nice let's say to join Noman. I owe a lot of my career to Noman. Um, I learn a lot there. That's why I always every time they call me, hey, I'm like, let's do it. You know, <laughs> um, awesome. Uh, yeah, and I wouldn't say that just because you guys invited me. It's just the truth. You know, I don't like mm. to promote people or whatever. It's just my way yeah, of being. I can tell. I can yeah. tell. Um, yeah, and, if, and if you guys, you know, if you're interested in Noman and you want to study what Leticia has studied with us, um, feel free to uh, follow the contact link that Xander will share in the chat. It's just going to get one of our advisors to reach out to you um, to have a conversation about what you love. Um, just like Leticia was saying about what you want to do. Um, and uh, you'll even get some free portfolio coaching as well. So feel free to reach out to us. We'd love a chance to chat with you. Um, and then, uh, yeah, come back on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be having another art jam with uh, Chief Creative Officer at Noman, uh, Josh Herman. Uh, I think he'll most likely be working in ZBrush as well. And then um, uh, we've got some great content coming up next month. So follow us on social media. Uh, for more info on that. So thanks, guys. Stay safe, everybody, and stay creative. And we'll see you back here on the Nomen stream soon.